Everyone has that house in their neighborhood during the holidays. You know which one I'm talking about. The one that goes all out with a fancy light display set to music. It draws crowds of people and lines of cars every December. I'm sure most of us don't necessarily want to be the house with a million lights and loud music, but every time I see a house like that, I catch the holiday light bug and I want to do more to bring joy to my family and the people around me. I was talking to my neighbor and he wants to put up permanent lights on his house. But he talked to the neighbor over across the street and apparently they paid $5,000 to have a professional installation done. He was resigned to the fact that a permanent installation was just too expensive and out of reach for him. That is, until I showed him photos of the DIY version that I did on my previous house. He was blown away by how simple my process was. Rather than paying thousands of dollars for a permanent light installation, I'm going to show you how I did it for a couple of hundred dollars. One of the things I want to do with this light display is leave it up year round. But if I install regular Christmas lights, I'll only be able to use them for a short period of time and then they'll be off for the rest of the year. So to solve this problem, I'm going to be using some LEDs that I can change the color of. But I want to take this one step further. I don't want these lights to be just one solid color. I want them to be able to do animations and transition between different effects. To accomplish this, you need something called individually addressable RGB LEDs. The RGB, of course, stands for red, green, blue. I need to find some LEDs. LEDs that have an ingress protection rating of either IP67 or even better IP68. These things are going to live outside on my roof and they're going to be exposed to all types of weather so I can't install LEDs that aren't designed to handle that. I think for this project I'm not going to use an LED strip but instead I'm going to use an LED string like this. You can buy these as individual strings or I ended up buying a 10 pack of them for about $130. So a 10 pack like this comes with 500 individual lights so that comes out to be about 26 cents per light. These LEDs LEDs are made for this type of application. They come encased in an epoxy, which give them an IP68 rating. The last consideration when buying these LEDs is the voltage rating. They come in two different types, 12 volt and 5 volt. There are pros and cons whether you choose the 12 volt or the 5 volt variety. Because I know that my controller is going to run off of 5 volts, the benefit of using a 5 volt string is that I only need one power supply. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, there are some great videos here on YouTube and I'll link to those down in the description. I've got to figure out a way to attach these LED strings to my roof. If I wanted to do a quick and dirty solution, I would just get up there with a staple gun and just staple this right to the roof line. But as you can see, these light bulbs are going to be pointing in all sorts of different directions and I don't think that's going to look very nice. So I need to figure out a way to attach this to something so that all of the lights are pointing in the same direction. There are some professional options like some metal channel that you can screw to your roof, but when you're doing several hundred feet, that gets really expensive. So I set out to find a much cheaper way to do this and I think I've come up with something pretty interesting. If you stroll down the aisles of your hardware store and look for inexpensive material that's really long, you're not going to find very many things cheaper per foot than PVC pipe. The diameter of those LEDs is about a half inch, so if I drill a half inch hole through this PVC pipe, I can feed the lights in and I could get them all facing the right direction. Here, you know what, let me just show you what I'm talking about. I've got a little piece of PVC pipe here and I've drilled holes in there that are a half inch in diameter. I can stick these LEDs right through and they'll come out on the other side and that way all of the LEDs will be evenly spaced and they'll be pointing in the same direction. I've been working on the math and in order to get 50 LED lights evenly spaced on a 10 foot length of PVC pipe, I need to space them exactly 2.4 inches apart. But the problem is that 2.4 inches is not something that you're going to easily find on a regular tape measure. It's not even a round number if you convert it to metric. So the problem becomes how do I drill holes that are exactly 2.4 inches apart across the length of a PVC pipe? And in fact, it's worse than that. I've got to do it 10 times, so that's 500 holes. Yes, I could get my tape measure or make some sort of like story stick and mark out the things, but I know that I'm not going to get it exact. And if I rely on measuring that distance from the previous hole, any errors that I start will accumulate over time and it won't end up looking right. I'm kind of OCD about stuff like this, and so if I don't end up with holes that are perfectly spaced, I'm going to know about it and it's going to bother me forever. So if this was your problem, how would you do that? How would you go about drilling holes that are exactly 2.4 inches apart all the way across the length of a PVC pipe and then have that repeat on all 10 PVC pipes? This is how we do this is where digital manufacturing comes into play. I'm lucky enough to have access to a CNC machine, and so I figured out a clever way to use the CNC machine to drill all these holes in the PVC pipe. I've got a small pilot hole drilled exactly 2.4 inches apart on all of the pieces of PVC. Now I need to make that pilot hole bigger so that it can fit the LED light. If I could fit a half inch drill bit into my CNC machine, I'd just finish it off on that. But since I don't have the right collet size for that, I'm going to have to do it by hand. I'm going to use a step bit to drill out these holes because it works much better than a regular drill bit on PVC pipe. I've got a temporary fence and the right depth set on my drill press, so now I can just drill out all of these holes. 
These individually addressable RGB LED strings are super easy to control. It only takes three wires to control an entire string. There's five volts, ground, and then a data signal. Let's talk for a second about what my options are for controlling all of these LEDs. I wanna be able to control them using my phone over Wi-Fi. So if I was gonna use a regular Arduino, I would have to have some sort of ethernet or Wi-Fi shield to go with it. I could also use a Raspberry Pi, but that's probably overkill for this project. So what I'm gonna use instead is a development board based off of the ESP8266 chip. This one is called a Wemos D1 Mini, and it's just a breakout board for that ESP microcontroller. The ESP-based microcontrollers have become a favorite among makers for IoT based projects. They're super cheap, they're readily available, and there's a lot of documentation about them. I could probably sit down for several days straight and write out a firmware to control all these LEDs in the way that I want to, but I don't have to because there's an awesome firmware already out there called WLED. It's basically a web server that runs on this microcontroller and it has every feature you could possibly think of. There's an awesome Wikipedia page that I was just reading about how to get started with these things, and flashing the firmware to the chip is super easy. You basically just plug in the USB cable to your computer and then it searches for the device and loads the firmware on there. You don't even have to like open up the Arduino IDE or anything like that. Now that I've got the WLED firmware flashed onto this microcontroller, it's time to solder a connector onto this board that will let me connect it to the LED string. If your project required a lot more components, you might want to use a prototyping board like this, but my project is so simple it literally requires three wires. It's just five volts, ground, and a data signal, so I'm just going to solder this connector directly to the board. I've got that connector soldered on here and I've got WLED flash to the microcontroller. Now I can plug in this string of 15 LEDs. Obviously if I had a whole string of LEDs, I wouldn't want to run them directly off of the power supply on this board because it would burn it out. It doesn't have enough current. I would have to use an external power supply. So I need to plug these in and I need to tell WLED how many LEDs are on my string and the color order. So if I go into the configuration menu and I do LED preferences, I scroll down and I say my length is 15 and my color order is RGB and then I hit save and we should see everything update and now if I go back to the main screen so I can use the color wheel and make it green or I can make it red or blue. So with that I've kind of verified that this setup works and that I can plug it into my longer strings. When you start daisy chaining these LED strings together over a long distance, there's gonna be a voltage drop at the end of the string. The beginning of your string might be at five volts, but by the time it gets to the end, it might be at one or two volts, and that's not enough to properly get all of the colors out of the LED. In order to mitigate the voltage drop issue, I'm going to install some 16 gauge wire inside the PVC pipe. I'm going to connect this wire in parallel to the five volt and ground wires that are already included on each string. By doing this, I'll have a much more reliable five volt source running inside the PVC pipe the entire length of the string and I can tap into that supply at each connection point in the PVC. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a piece of this wire that's just longer than the PVC pipe. Then I'm going to connect the 5 volts and ground to each end of the LED string. If you look closely, each end of the string already comes with a little pigtail for 5 volts and ground for this very purpose, so that makes it really easy. One thing I'm being careful to note is to install these LEDs in such a way that the writing on the PVC pipe will be on the back side. I want the blank white side to be the visible side and I want all of the writing to be on the back.
Now that I've got that first string done, I just need to repeat the same thing nine more times so I have all of the strings on the PVC pipes. Once I finish with that, I can start installing them on the house. With all of the LED strings installed in the PVC pipes, it's time to install them onto my house. When I installed these same type of lights on my house in Vermont, I used this type of bracket. It required me to hold the piece of PVC up on the house with one hand and then hold this clip on while trying to drill a pilot hole and then screw it in. It was really kind of a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna do that this time. Instead, I'm gonna use this style of clip, which I can just install ahead of time. And then when I'm ready to install the PVC pipe, I can just go in and it just clips in after the fact. Once I've got two of these strings installed, I need to connect the power and the data cables together. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I need to do that around the rest of the house now. At this point, I have strings run around all of the roof line of the house, and I'm ready to attach the little microcontroller that will turn on the LEDs. It has the mating connector right here, so all I need to do is just plug it into the end, and then I've 3D printed a little case out of PETG, and I'm gonna screw that up underneath the eave so it doesn't get any direct sunlight or rain on it. The last thing I need to do is set up a power supply so that I can supply power to all of the lights. To do that, I got a 300 watt power supply. This five volt unit is capable of supplying up to 60 amps of power. That's about twice as much as I'll need for the lights that I have, but it's better to have a safety factor than to be operating toward the upper limit. Even though this is gonna live under the covered porch, I'm going to install it in this weatherproof case here. Check this out, this is so cool. These enclosures come with like a little mounting panel that has the little squares that are a thick space five millimeters apart, but it's really modular. It's basically designed so that you can kind of drill out some of the holes and attach different things to it. I've drilled out four holes here for the power supply and I've put in screws from the back side so that holds it in place. That means that you can kind of wire everything up outside of the box here on the panel and then when you're ready to install it, you just put it in place and screw it down. The first thing I need to do is cut a hole in the bottom so that I can install one of these power connectors. This connector is great because it has a fuse that protects the input of the power supply. It also has a little switch which will make it really convenient to turn on and off the power supply from the outside of the box. The five volt outputs will also need to be protected by a fuse. So for that, I'm gonna use a little inline blade fuse holder like this. Once I'm done installing all of these components, I'll be able to move the box outside and plug in all of the lights. Oh crud, this isn't gonna work. Sometimes I use these little ferrules as like butt crimps, but if I was to use that in this situation, there'd be no way for me to get my tool off because there's an obstruction on both ends of the cable. So I'm gonna have to figure something else out. So instead, I think I'm just gonna use one of these solder seal heat shrink connectors, and that should be good enough. All right, I've been waiting for the sun to go down and I'm ready to test these things for the first time. So I'm just gonna open up the WLED app and I'm gonna turn them on and all of the segments are linked together. So when I turn on the first one, all of them should turn on. So let's see how it goes. There they go. Those look so good.
This is awesome because I can control the whole thing from my phone or have it automated on a schedule. So if I go to my presets, I can change it to Halloween, for example, and make it orange and purple. Or I can go to my Christmas playlist and have it play all of the Christmas animations. So this isn't even my first project using this type of LED. A long time ago, I built this Stranger Things message wall. You should totally go check out this video. 